but we just want kids that come to us that have a very, very positive influence. So I would say 99 out of 100 times, the middle school kids that we tend to get from our program are ones that are usually uh, not very highly trained. Now when we do start to train them and we have to make decisions on what runs are going to look like, <coughs> there's a few things we look at. So I, I do want to know their background. What have they done? Uh, we'll get kids that have never been a part of our middle school program. Probably about 80% of what we do get, uh, they have been a part of that middle school program. Uh, a few kids every now and again will have that really big background on, uh, uh, or have actually uh, been running at some point. Uh, our philosophy is no matter where they come from, we are really conservative with them e like, even when they're ready to go. If they're like, give us more, give us more, uh, I'm okay with that. I, I want them moving forward uh, wanting more. And we do try to explain to them, to those kids that are really eager about it, that you know, we've got a plan for you and we're going to send you somewhere in four years from now that hopefully that you're going to be better off than when you started. Uh, you know, if I take, uh, this is Josh Romine. Uh, that was him as a freshman. He's running at uh, Duke University right now. He was, uh, well, everybody on our team refers to him as the GOAT because I guess he's our greatest of all time. The, uh, this is him after getting, I think, like 13th place in a frosh soft race. Uh, ended up second in state cross country for us at one point. We could have taken Josh. He showed some potential right away. And I could have said, Josh, let's start running 50 miles a week right now as a freshman. But I don't know where I'm going to send him after that. Even if he would have been healthy, where do I go after that? Do I run him you know, 70, 80, 90, 100 miles like going forward? Uh, I wanted to give him some room to grow or kids room to grow. And I, I well, in terms of, I, I don't really count mileage, but in terms of, I think, what kids do mileage wise is really sort of insignificant. And I think you find what's appropriate for your program and you make it work. Uh, but I also want to be very mindful of, am I going to give these kids in our program, whether they run in college or not, uh, a chance to develop each year a little bit more? So we really focus on what does that look like, the process. And we try to teach them best we can. One of the ways that we do that is we're constantly talking. Or we use that blog or we'll post training for them. Uh, we really try to teach them fundamental stuff, just basic stuff that you take for granted, the sleep, the nutrition, all those things. But a lot of times it's the older kids in the program that uh, teach that. And like I said previously, one of the best gifts you can give a kid, and I, I'm totally stealing this, uh, I think, from Jerry Schumacher, uh, who said this out at the Nike Clinic this last year, uh, one of the best gifts you can give somebody, an athlete, is consistent, uh, consistency. Just be there all the time uh, with them. Uh, go all in with them, and if you're consistent with them, they're much more likely to, uh, to be consistent. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about with training on this slide. Uh, should you specialize a freshman? So during the track season, do you look at a freshman and say, this kid's an 800 meter runner, or this kid's a two miler? Uh, we don't specialize a lot of kids for this re well, e even our older kids, we rarely do it. Uh, for this reason, kind of going back to that idea of a, a blank canvas, and what do you want to paint on your canvas? If I have kids that have trained as cross country runners throughout the entire fall, uh, I'm going to be more likely for them, to, or for me personally, to want to train them more maybe middle distance like, to give them some different stimulus, to give them some different experiences and things. Uh, with a freshman, I'm always going to do that. Uh, our freshmen on the track probably, if I was to call it like a type of workout that they're training at, is, I mean, it's kind of to get them ready for the mile so they can run everything from the 400, even the 200, uh, up to the two mile. When they get a little bit older and if they have very specific goals like um, I want to qualify for the state meet in the two mile or I want to go to uh, New Balance Outdoor in the 800 or something like that, we might look at them and say, okay, this is someone we really know. We've known this kid for a couple of years. We might decide to specialize them at that point. Uh, but for the most part, uh, we, we try not to. And we ch uh, do try to add some variety into what we've done in the past and train them a little bit more middle distance like uh, during that part of the season. Uh, some specific tricks that we've used with some success at Vista. <clears throat> when they come out, uh, you're going to get kids that are all over the place with their ability and what they can do. So the young kids, when they come out, we'll ask them uh, to pick a distance. So we'll give you options. So like you could run today, you have 20 or 30 minutes or 15 to 30 minutes, whatever it is. Just give them some choice. 
uh, a lot of young kids will come out and they're going to be intimidated by the idea of I have to do a 30 minute run. I mean, that might as well be a marathon. Uh, when the first time we tell kids they have to go to Starbucks and back, uh, Starbucks and back is three miles from our school. The first time they've, if they've never done that, that's intimidating for some of those kids. Uh, they don't want anything to do with it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, they don't, a lot of them don't wear watches. So we'll just have them, like, you get some kids that are like 30 minutes, big deal, or Starbucks, big deal. I've done that since I was in the third grade. Uh, they might come back, and as soon as they're coming back, as soon as the fastest kid on the way back gets to them, we'll just have them turn around, come back. It's a way to manage it for them so that they're not overwhelmed by it. Uh, we let the kids walk when they start. Now, I don't, I don't want a group of walkers out there. I, I don't want that at all. And if the older kids were out walking, it would drive me insane. I would lose it. Uh, but for a young kid who is new to your program and wants to be a part of it, the first goal that we set for them is one 15-minute run without stopping. And if you can't do that yet, that is okay. We will take you where you're at because we want that kid to be on our team. I don't know how that kid's going to develop eventually. Uh, so they might do, like, hey, go run for two minutes, walk a minute. Uh, the next time, go three minutes and walk a minute until they can get to 15. Our second goal with them is, all right, you've done 15 minutes. Can you do 15 minutes for at least five runs in one week without stopping? And that's where we focus on it. And some kids can do it pretty quick. Other kids can't. And when they can finally do it, we'll celebrate it and we'll make them feel like they've really accomplished something because they have. They've gone somewhere they haven't gone before. They're doing something they haven't done before. Uh, we won't do much of anything with any sort of like intensity of any kind until a freshman can uh, run at least five days a week, 30 minutes without having to stop. That's really where we try to get them initially.